Hey everybody, it's your boy Zero here, up for another Gunpla review. And today's episode is the Gundam H3, not to be confused with the Gundam Tri H3. The two separate mobile suits, again, one's a paradoxical Gundam, and one's actual, you know, not paradoxical, if you will. So this comes from the, obviously, Gundam Age, and this is the third form of the Age unit. And it eventually evolves into, this will be the stage right before it becomes the Age FX. So... This would be the main character's grandson. Which I thought was interesting. That the whole lineage of a family pilot in one mobile suit. Just, it's different evolved states, if you will. Yes, I do make a lot of Pokemon references. I'm willing, that's the easiest way I can, I can not make a good analogy to this. This is basically Pokemon. State, age 1 is a Charmander. Age 2 is a Charmeleon. And age 3 is a Charizard. And age FX is Mega Charizard. Which one you prefer, it's your personal preference. I prefer to think if it's the X one when you got the cool, you know, black version of it. But that's my personal opinion. But that's just me ranting. So, I picked up this dude long ago. I honestly think I did get this from Galactic Toys. I think. If not, most likely Amazon. So, but I can tell you for sure, I know they don't have this dude currently on Galactic Toys, so you may have to look on Amazon, or wherever you feel comfortable ordering Gundam models from. But if you feel like ordering from Galactic Toys, please use my link down below, support the channel, it is the holidays, and your homeboy needs Christmas presents money. So, we can focus on that. So, let's get into the review, and check out this really interesting looking Gundam. Okay, as this is a backlog kit, this... Doesn't have any of the stickers it comes with, but all the extra beam effect. Go for the other arm. But it does come with the stand, which is awesome. I do have the stand still. And yes, you can transform it into a plane. Because it does have a parts formation, which I do not have the parts for, as you can tell by the way the knee bends. Quick tell, if you can, your legs can do that, you know full well it is a transforming Gundam. Because the legs are almost always, and I do mean almost always, the thrusters. Yeah, like I said, thruster feet. Therefore, it has a lot more articulation than normal Gundams would, because they don't need it to transform. Uh, heck, even the armor and the knees bend differently, because, you know, normally it doesn't bend, but this moves forward and back. But be careful, this piece will get in the way of knee bends. So, let's get onto the weapons first. I really do like this gun. It is an odd position of a gun. You know, the main part of the gun being underhand instead of overhand, but, you know, it still looks very cool. Surprisingly, it does not get in the way of the articulation of the hand. Of the arms, at least. That's the arm fully bent, which is awesome. Let's move that out of the way. And now we do sideways. Not bad. Let's check out the shoulder joint. Not bad at all. Honestly, I think when it comes to side joints, for at least the shoulders, the age unit is usually do have the better arm for this. It comes with two holding hands, a dynamic hand. I only have the dynamic hand attached. But it does come with two holding hands. Though I do wish again, you should be able to realistically put the gun in both hands, but in either hand, but hey, what can I tell you? And of course, best version of a bean saber, built into the arm. I do not know why. No other, mo very rarely do mobile suits do this. Beam Saber, arm, best design. Alright, let's do the legs. Like I said, be careful, this will get in the way. And there we go. Not bad. Because of the parts formation, it does give it a lot of bend. But again, this will get in the way if you're not careful. As you can clearly see, great articulation on the foot. This moves up and down a little. We got the splits. Slightly non-paralyzed back skirt, but that's as far as you go.
The verniers on the backpack do move, but it does, but unfortunately it doesn't really change anything. But it, due to the parts formation, you can move it into rocket into ship mode. And of course, we gotta do the ab crunch. But be careful, it is a little bit looser here in the waist. Opposed to, again, because it has the ability to transform into another, into a vehicle mode. You're gonna get some issues. And you can see it has the age unit sticker. Sticker in the eye, sticker in the camera. Sticker in the back camera. Perfect 360 in the head. So all in all, the posability of this dude, not bad. The design, honestly, I'm not against it. I have a personal bias. H2 Darkhound is my personal favorite design out of all the age units. Maybe because it's a darker version, a dark version of the H2. Maybe because it's dark and pirate themed. I don't know. But I, if I have to go in order, it would be the H2 Darkhound, H3, FX, H1, and then H2. If we just got to go that descending order of which of the incarnations of the age unit do I prefer. But all in all, they're not bad designs. Not at all. But, I mean, the show was a mess because the gaping flaw in the villain's plan made... the pl Hell, the main villain's plan made no sense to me. Caused a long war, a very long generational war to make one psychic magic baby to end all wars. Yeah, I got nothing on that. That seems like the plan of a crazy person, right up there with Thanos. As much as I love the idea of Infinity War, he was a crazy person. But that's, enough. again, personal biases. Uh, so, let's get to the summary and wrap up the review before I go on a rant about movies and video games that have nothing to do with a Gundam. Okay, so, the Age 3 Gundam, specifically Age 3 Gundam Normal, because there are variants to them, because they have different transformations, blah, blah, blah. This is a solid kit, and I do, again, love that it comes with a stand, both for regular and flight mode. If you want to do it in regular mode, you can plop it right here. If you want to do it in flight mode, you can plop it right here, or... I think you can remove this part. No, you can move it up and down. And move. And try to move this part, but. Eh. Yeah, I'm not going to try to break it. Let's get that out of the way. But yeah, you do have a stand with it, which, again, you know me, always love. It's a sturdy kit. Nothing's coming off of this dude anytime soon, which is great. And for something with a lot of weight in its arms and back, it's surprisingly stable. But. The knee, the knee armor. I get it, you need it for transformation, but it gets in the way when you're trying to pose. So you have to be constantly aware of it. And they're not incredibly tight. They're kind of loose. So there's a chance it could pop off on you. So you may want to keep an eye on that. But with that being said, it looks really good if you compare it to the box art. It's fairly, you know, one for one. So you don't really need to paint it per se. If, I mean, if you want to, go for it. But uh, aside from that, you if you want to, yes, I would recommend panel lining. But that's, again, a personal preference. I don't. But you could. So there's always an option there. Aside from that, no, this is a solid kit. Nothing will fall off. It's stable, which is sometimes rare, especially with a Gundam with a lot of weight in the back. It's balance again, rare for Gundams who actually have to transform, who have all the port, have a transformation or transformation gimmick. They're usually not 100% stable because there's so many gimmicks running inside of it, and it's kind of a pain, but this one is slightly more stable than the others, which I'm actually impressed by. So, would I recommend it? Of course. Again, 9 times out of 10, I will recommend a Gundam. Because, again, all Gunpla, minusing a hand, tiny amount, are always fun. Unless they're literally hand grenades, I would recommend it. And if, even if they are hand grenades, I would recommend it, but I would recommend glue to go with that. 
and make sure it never moves again. In this case, I would recommend it. If you like the H series, go for it. If you like specifically the H3, obviously get it. But, you know, just be aware of the floors and the knees and how they catch on, some, catch on sometimes. But that being said, yeah, worth it. Uh, I have no idea what I'm reviewing on Friday, so look forward to that. And I don't know if I'm going to do an episode for Monday. Maybe I'll do one on Sunday. I haven't decided, but I don't know. Because the holidays being next week, I haven't decided if I'm going to do an episode or not. But yeah, so I'll catch you guys on Friday with a new episode. So, I'm just, sorry about the pauses. I'm looking around to see what model I haven't reviewed yet. I'm running low on those. It's a scary sight when I'm starting to run low on backlog kits of reviews. Ooh, spooky. But, yeah. Uh, I'll catch you guys on Friday or Thursday, depending on whenever the episode goes live. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us. If you've been here forever, thank you for still being around. I always appreciate that. Uh, if you want to support the channel, please use the links down below. They really help. And if you want to buy one of my books, the links are also down below. So check those out, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Yeah.